AMD's next big GPU does look to have some fierce competition to go up against Nvidia. Do you want a CPU that's made of plastic? And are you tired of the x86 domination? You can't wait for Risk v to take over. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your host, Brett. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet. Starting off talking about AMD and their upcoming Navi 3 GPUs, which we're expecting to actually release sometime at the end of next year. More details are coming out from well-known leakers about these chips, and it does appear to be some good rumors. This is the kind of stuff that gets everybody excited. This is the stuff that we hear every year. And then sometimes, like with the 6000 series GPUs, AMD does deliver on it. The 6900 XT actually beats Nvidia's best GPUs in a lot of scenarios. It was a really good thing to see, especially considering the price point. But the new indications about AMD's upcoming RDNA 3 architecture is that it's gonna be more power efficient than the next generation Ada Loveless GPUs that are coming out from Nvidia. Yet. And new reports indicating that the Navi 31 chip, which is supposed to be the multi-chip die, which is going to have two GPUs slapped together to make some just GPU sandwich that's gonna go slotted right into your PCI Express slot and make it so you're never hungry for frame rates again. That's supposed to be taped out soon. Whereas Navi 32, which is supposed to be the stripped down, you know, not quite quad whopper, but like kind of Baconator level type of GPU, that's gonna be in Q1 of 2022, which indicates that AMD is getting ready to make these to come out. Just so you're aware, Navi 31 is supposed to be the big boy, the one that we're expecting to have. It's like two to three times the performance of what we currently have in the 6900 XT. That's just the rumors that are out there. Navi 32 is supposed to be a step below that. And then Navi 31 is supposed to be a single chip on a die, not supposed to have multiple complexes just fusing together. It's just gonna be one, but that's supposed to be faster than the 6900 XT. Again, take this with the huge grain of salt. These are just the rumors that are coming out from a lot of people and the indication as you can see here that Ada Loveless is going to be three fire emojis whereas RDNA 3 is only going to be two fire emojis and that's not on a hot factor that's on a power efficiency factor so you could expect that even though RDNA 3 is going to wipe the floor with Nvidia according to the rumors it's also going to do it at not thermonuclear levels of temperature. And you see this chart here which is just comparing both the current gen GPUs and what we're expecting to come out in the near future you have Ampere as the base level one, RDNA 2 is 90% of that, which it kind of is in a lot of instances. In some instances, it's better. Ada Loveless is going to be 2.2 times current Ampere where we are. RDNA 3 will be two and a half. And then the GPU that's beyond Ada Loveless, which is going to be the Grace Hopper architecture, that's going to be three times what we have right now. I know this seems fanciful, but it does seem like we're entering into a new era of GPUs that are going to be based on new technologies that haven't really come out yet, such as the multi-chip modules. AMD and NVIDIA are both pursuing doing that. They're also seeing breakthroughs in things like AMD with their 3D cache technology that they're rolling out on Ryzen CPUs. There's breakthrough after breakthrough that's coming out where I'm going to hold my breath on two to three times the performance, but at the same time, I'm not a super smart GPU engineer. I don't know the ins and outs of all of this, so I, I, I reserve my judgment and say that I'm more excited for the future of GPUs than I was two years ago. Despite the stock shortages, despite the fact that it's been very difficult for people to get their hands on GPUs. The 3000 and 6000 series of GPUs this generation are just absolutely phenomenal and I'm excited for the future. What do you think of RDNA 3? What do you think of Loveless? I want to hear from you down below in the comments. And I also want you to hear about today's episode sponsor. Today's episode of Hot News is brought to you by Honey. These days it really feels like online shopping is the only type of shopping that I do. It's so convenient to have everything delivered to my Pennsylvania house before I've even arrived. And that's where today's sponsor Honey comes in. It's the free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and automatically tests them when you're checking out. It's basically your online shopping best friend. Here's how it works. You get Honey on your computer for free in two easy clicks. Then when you're checking out on one of its 30,000 supported sites, Honey pops up and all you have to do is click apply coupons. You wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons for that site. And if Honey finds a working code, you'll watch the prices drop. I've been buying a lot of PC equipment on Newegg lately to kickstart the next generation of UFD tech 
Tech, and Honey has saved me at least $200 on that website alone with all of the promo codes it's applied. Those of you who have already installed Honey using my link have found over $54,000 in savings. Honey supports all kinds of retailers from tech and gaming sites to clothing brands to even food delivery. It's free and it works with whatever browser you're using. So you can get Honey for free today by going to joinhoney.com forward slash hot news. That's joinhoney.com forward slash hot news so that they know I sent you. Thanks, Honey, again for sponsoring today's video. You're probably going to need Honey, especially if you're buying another RTX 3090 after New World just absolutely destroyed it, nuked your GPU. There are some reports coming out indicating that New World is causing issues on a whole bunch of GPUs. It's not just the 3090 that's having issues, but the 3090s are the only ones that I'm seeing physically die, which probably might be re related to the memory, but it does seem like New World. The Amazon MMO, which we talked about in yesterday's episode of Hot News, does have some like programming issues, and they, they came out and they were like, hey, hundreds of thousands of people are playing this game with no problem. So those of you who have a problem, you're not real, but just in case you are, we're gonna patch it so that it caps the frame rate, all right? Just so you whiny whiners who spent $3,000 on a GPU can just shut up already, we're gonna patch it, okay? But hundreds of thousands of people are enjoying this game, okay? Whatever edge case scenario you are with your multi-thousand dollar loss, suck it up, you should have got insurance. At least that's how I feel like Amazon speaks to me. But don't worry, if you're invested in the crypto market, maybe you can get your returns there for your dead 3090. Let's get into the crypto stonks update, Bitcoin. <laughs> Up 0.7% today, 32.32603 at the time of recording. Ethereum up 1% to 2019 and 15 cents. Dogecoin also up 1.39% to be at about 19 cents. Seems like a green day in the crypto market overall. GameStop not faring quite as well, down 3.75% to close at 178.85. And AMC down 8.68% to close at 37.24. Just not a good couple of weeks for, for the meme stonks. They just, they seem to keep slip sliding. There's not a whole lot of rallying going on. Will they return? Will I drop them off the face of this segment and just keep you updated on crypto? Find out next week. Cause holy crap, it's Friday. And holy crap, Dead Space is back. EA announcing Dead Space is being remade for the PS5, Xbox series consoles and PC. A next gen game, truly indeed. If you don't talk about the game engine that is being built on. Anyways, the trailer, horrifying. Looks really good, has kind of that next gen lighting stuff. It says it's captured in engine, gets me all excited. I actually personally, I know this is gonna be a shock to a lot of you never played the original Dead Space. It's one of those games that's on my list of like games that I need to get to and now I will just get to the remake, which is not going to be a straight one for one remake like Blue Point Studios has been doing with Demon's Souls or Shadow of the Colossus. This is gonna be more of like an inspired remake where they're gonna take things from Dead Space 2 and 3 and roll them into this new one. And so it's gonna be slightly different. And it's also been confirmed that it's gonna be on the Frostbite engine, which if you think about the last time that like an action shooter kind of game was put on the Frostbite engine, we got Mass Effect Andromeda. So I'm not sure I trust the Frostbite engine on this one, hopefully. Yeah, I can prove me wrong. I'm excited to try it out. Don't pre-order, no release window. We'll see when we potentially can get it. But I'm also really excited for Back for Blood with NVIDIA giving us an update that it's going to have in DLSS technology at launch. I'm gonna, I'm super excited for that. Now I'm gonna be able to DLSS that up. I'm just I'm just putting this here. DLSS in and of itself is not hot news. Like I, I just wanna keep talking about Back for Blood because I'm so freaking excited to play this game. All right, M made from some of the original people from Left 4 Dead. It looks really good in all the gameplay trailers and all of like the alphas that they've been, like people have been playing. I just, it's everything I've wanted for the last two decades. One decade, how old am I? I'm old enough not to play Battlefields because I just never got into the game. That's nothing to do with age. Battlefield 2042 is gonna have a new game mode, which they've unveiled as Portal, which essentially is going to be custom game modes on steroids where you can configure a whole bunch of different just experiences in game design that you want to play Battlefield together with your friends and your family and your ex-friends and your ex-men. Like you can do that now with Battlefield Portal, which is rolling out to 2042. And what could be rolling out to a CPU near you is plastic. Yes, my friends, ARM coming out and talking talking about how they're working on plastic technology for CPUs to get away from silicon. This is to make it more flexible and just kind of experiment with what's going on. ARM's produced a fully functional non-silicon version
version of their M0 microprocessor. I'm gonna leave links in the video description for you to actually check all of this out in case you're interested in the technical details. There's a great write-up over on Anantech for you on that, so go check that out. But you could also check out the world's first RISC-V processor being paired with a Radeon RX 6700 XT. It is time, my friends. The world of x86 is dead. Intel's stranglehold on your CPU is no longer. Now that we can have GPUs just being merged with ARM. NVIDIA showing that off with the RTX 3060 on an ARM processor. Now we got some random Linux programmer out there being like, hey, Risk 5 you're matching up with my 6700 XT. I'll leave links in the video description to this, and there's also a YouTube video you can check out, but essentially the person got the 6700 XT with the Risk 5 processor to work on Linux after many, many hours. We'll leave the link to the video in the description in case you care about this at all. It's an hour long, but I'm sure a lot of you people might actually get something good out of it. And I'm out of it, so why don't you go check out yesterday's episode of Hot News where we talked about the Amazon issue on how they're frying their GPUs, but we also talked about the first game on the PS5 to get AMD's FSR. See you on Monday, my friends. Cheers.